This is Bill Murphy, and we are going to get started right now with our FODs webinar. And a reminder that welcome, friends. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can advance my slide. I got so excited about the music. Uh, remind you who we are. We are ASP Enterprises, Quick Supply Company, Bowman Construction Supply, and Cascade Geosynthetics. And that may sound like a lot, but to me, it's a, still a family-owned business. We are considered a family group because we all know each other across the states. And we do have a whole lot of people working for us now, but we are still local. And we've kept all those names on purpose because we've got a lot of these companies that have been in business for 40 years. And our sales professionals include a whole lot of people that are experts in sediment and erosion control and stormwater. And we are here to help you. We've been blessed with a very busy year and we are blessed and grateful. I am the one civil engineer on staff that you see on your screen. We do have more than 9,000 customers and we are in all of these states and then some. So depending on what product we're carrying or which manufacturer we're dealing with, they may already have some relationships in some of those areas. So there may be some overlap, but we still are your local sales reps for all of your construction supply needs. And for some of you are familiar with us in only one or two of these, but not all of them. All of our branches do carry erosion and sediment control solutions and stormwater management solutions along with geosynthetics. And only a handful of them carry hardscapes and that's growing um, as well. And those uh, in industries overlap. So we've got a lot of experts and all the above. Whatever it is you need, just get a hold of us and we'll put the right person in touch with you. We are blessed with some very large warehouses and some very large yards so we can hold a lot of inventory. A lot of businesses try to reduce their inventory, especially going into winter, but we make sure we have what you need when you need it and we can get it to you. Our next slide that I took out actually to reduce the number of slides shows a whole lot of trucks. And we've got trucks of all kinds of sizes covering all those states I showed you on the map. And we're very good at getting those, those products uh, at the right place at the right time. So again, I am the civil engineer for all of these companies. And if you uh, in your local market already have an ASP Enterprises Sales Rep or Cascade Geo or Bowman Construction Supply or right here in Iowa where I'm at at Quick Supply Company, uh, you go ahead and contact that sales rep. And if they have technical questions, I'll answer them if I can. And if I can't, I'll bring in the experts from the manufacturers. We are a one-stop shop for you so you don't have to bounce around. And for those of you that are familiar with our webinar series, we will send out a survey monkey after this webinar. And we're going to ask you to verify your name, your email address, your you know company contact info, not to hassle you, but just to make sure we know where to send that PDH certificate for you attending this for your continuing education needs, but also to keep you in the loop on future webinars. In fact, we have another one next week. I don't have a slide to show it, but next week on Wednesday the 4th, we're going to cover some green infrastructure and low impact development that goes from gray to green to smart. And that is a very fast growing industry, and we are staying right ahead of the curve. So please stay tuned for the end of this. I'll share this contact information with you again. And we do ask that you remember this is just an intro. If you want us to uh, give a presentation directly with you or your company, contact us at either of these, any of these companies or contact me directly. And we can give you not only a deeper dive on what we're presenting today, which is FODs, we could also hook up with you and our FODs friends to give you some free advice on your specific projects. Without further ado, I'm going to jump right into the FODs part of the presentation, and I'm going to ask Kevin and Chloe to unmute themselves, and I'm going to pull up their bios, because I think it's great to give somebody's bio so you kind of know who you're talking to, or hearing from, I guess, in this case. But I want to make sure that you also know that we're going to have more than one presenter today. We're going to have a presenter that's also named Ron Whiteman, and Ron's going to be towards the end after our friends get going here from FODs and do their intro originally. And I'll introduce Ron when it's his turn to speak. But Kevin Martinez is the founder and CEO of FODS. A former contractor and pilot, Kevin invented and co-founded FODS as a simple and effective solution to the common problems with stabilized construction entrances. Kevin has a wealth of knowledge and experience in the industry, and FODS has quickly grown under his leadership, and I've, I've watched it happen, folks. With him is Chloe Moretz, and Chloe is a senior specifier, relationship manager with FODS. In her role, Chloe works as a support liaison to engineers like myself and specifiers like yourselves on FODs projects. Additionally, Chloe oversees the submission and approval of FODs reusable track out control system by federal, state, and local governing bodies and assists in a sales support role, which means if you call us or you call me or you call one of our sales folks and we don't have the answers, Kevin and Chloe will, and they have some other people on their team that I've met, and they're all wonderful people. So with that, I want to hand it over to Kevin and Chloe. I'm going to give you the controls right now. You go ahead and say hello and 
click on your screen and you should be driving the bus. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to FODS. Um, my name's Kevin Martinez. I'm here with Chloe. Um, one thing I want to know is if everybody can hear me, so I'm not talking to the computer. You sound great. <laughs> okay. Um, I did invent the product um, in 2010 uh, when I was doing a build out here in Denver, Colorado at the um, CDOT training facility. And for years and years, we have always had problems with track out control and aggregate at the exit point. And on this particular project, I was in charge of building out the, the track out control um, end of things. And when I was looking at it, I was like, you know what, there has to be a better way and a better solution to this. And I sat out and I just started brainstorming it. And lo and behold, um, the following day, I came up with some drawings and ideas. And I went to the senior engineer for CDOT and I showed him my drawings and told him what I wanted to do. And I wanted to build um, a mat, a track out control mat that cleaned the tires better than anything on the planet and would be sustainable and work for about 12 to 14 years. And um, sitting down with the engineer, he looked at me and kept staring at me. And I'm like, you know what? Uh, I wish you'd stop staring at me. And he's like, you know what, Kevin, you just came up with the perfect mousetrap. We've needed something like this for 25 years. And then FODS was born. I got a, a patent on the product in 2012 and we searched all over the world to find a manufacturer that can make our product. We ended up in Florida, 10 minutes from Cape Canaveral is where our factory is. So we're um, manufactured here in the USA. It's a great product. It works incredibly well, and we'll see it in the future, but not only in its wheelhouse. Our wheelhouse with Bowman has been uh, highways, bridges, infrastructure, construction. However, we're in about 10 to 15 other industries throughout the country. So FODS has a fit in, in many infrastructures, or excuse me, uh, companies and, and whatnot uh, around the country. So uh, we're, we have a national distribution network. Right now, we have roughly over 100 distributors from coast to coast. We're also in Alaska, Canada, um, United Kingdom, Australia, New Zealand. And about three weeks ago, we reached out and we have a distributor in Japan of all places. So I'd like to thank you for coming on the webinar with us and Chloe will take it from here. Great, thank you so much, Kevin. Um, and thank you to all of you who have joined the presentation today. Um, as Kevin said, my name is Chloe Moretz. I'm the Specifier Relationship Manager here at FODS. Um, thanks to Bowman for facilitating this. We really value our relationship with, you know, all of the Bowman Quick Supply, Cascade, uh, ASP. And we also have been looking forward to talking with some of their partners as well. So thank you all for taking the time to join today. So before we get too far, I always like to take a minute just to say, what are FODs and answer that question. Basically, FODs are just a composite track out control system that are used as a substitute to that typical rock construction entrance, you know, that's required by the EPA. They provide that site access and also really work to reduce the amount of mud that's tracked off site by construction traffic so that not only do they ensure environmental compliance, but they also work to minimize liability as well. FODs are really easy to install, remove, and relocate. And as Kevin kind of mentioned before, they do have a long lifespan of 10 plus years. As you can see in these photos, the top surface of the mat is a geometric pattern that's formed in the shape of pyramids. So basically how it works is a vehicle drives over the mat, the tires are deformed by the pyramids, Obviously, there's no damage at all caused to the tires. Um, so any kind of debris or sediment in the lugs of the tires or on them uh, fall to the base of the mat. So the vehicle tires are then clean and they can leave that site without transporting mud or any other contaminants. You'll usually see FOD specified on the stormwater pollution prevention plan or in like an erosion control detail or something like that. Um, here are a few technical details on the mats. Um, each mat is 12 feet wide by seven feet in the direction of travel. 
that's the direction that the pyramids are staggered in to really ensure the effectiveness of cleaning off tires. Um, and those pyramids that I talked about earlier are just shy of three inches tall. Um, the mats are extremely durable, they're stackable, and they can be used on any substrate. So this is a huge benefit of the system for sure. If you ever have a project where you need a construction entrance or a way to clean tires as vehicles exit over pre-existing concrete or asphalt, the mats can actually just be anchored to that surface and they really work to protect that surface underneath as well. So that can be a really time and cost savings uh, way to achieve um, track out control rather than peeling up the asphalt or something like that to put down the stone. Um, and it is a modular system. The panels can be placed in any layout to meet your specific site requirements. Um, and no prior excavation is needed at all. Um, there's one thing I do wanna mention really quickly before we get too far. A lot of my pictures show stone around the FODs. There's no need to use any rock in conjunction with them. It's just, I would say about 30% of our projects pods are brought on site after the construction entrance isn't quite meeting um, standards or the contractor is getting fined or something like that. So just to clarify, no prior excavation or stone is needed at all. Um, and they are very easy to clean and maintain. And we'll talk about cleaning and maintenance as we go on throughout the presentation. Here's a 3D rendering of the mat that gives you just a good idea of what they look like. Based on some recent feedback we received from the aviation industry, we uh, recently released a new prototype of the mat that has a few slight changes. Essentially, the first few rows of the pyramids are staggered in this ramp design, as you can see here in the picture, that allows all vehicles, including those passenger vehicles, um, to drive onto them easier. Additionally, the design really increases the effectiveness of the product by uh, removing debris and sediment through greater vehicle vibration and it also works to increase the tire deformation as well. So this, this rendering, I like it because it kind of gives you a good idea of what the mat looks like. And I have driven over them before in a Subaru Crosstrek, no problem. So they're quite friendly to all different types of vehicles. Um, we've had VODs tested by third-party engineers. One of those is CTL Thompson, they're a materials engineer and they did various evaluations to determine the strength of the mats. Essentially what they found is the mats really can't max out from a weight perspective. Each pyramid actually has a crush rating of 20,000 pounds and your typical vehicle, um, even your smallest like Prius tire is going to be dispersed over four pyramids. A larger uh, construction type truck or vehicle was probably gonna be over about eight pyramids. So um, they can really handle a lot of weight. And um, they also found that the FODs can handle over 1 million vehicle passes, which definitely proves their long life and durability. The mats also do have a 15 year UV inhibitor added into them. So you don't ever have to worry about them being broken down by the sun or anything like that. The HDPE plastic um, has that in there. And I do like to mention also that HDPE plastic is the most environmentally stable of all plastics. So I'm going to show you all a quick video here. Hopefully it comes through okay on your end. Um, but what you're basically seeing here in this video is a project, a huge heavy civil project down in Arizona called Connect 202. And what you're seeing here is that for about half an hour before the site opened and vehicles were allowed on, there was, um, they were lining up for half an hour to enter the site. So once it was open, there was just a steady stream of traffic driving over the mats. This particular video shows 2 million pounds driving over them in 60 seconds. So you can see the structural integrity isn't compromised at all. The pyramids are still upright. They're not compressed, anything like that. So if you do choose to use FODs on a project or specify them or recommend them, you don't have to worry about them at all, like breaking down from a weight perspective. Also, my toddler loves this video. He's three years old and it's one of his favorite things. I show it to him to prove that I have the cooler job than dad. And so far it's really been working. <laughs> I'm laughing, but I'm muted. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and here's some of the, um, you know, some of the biggest players in the industry. I'm sure you all recognize a lot of these names. Perhaps we have some of you on the call who work with these companies, but ranging from civil engineers to construction companies to DOTs, they're all utilizing FODs. And we really think that this fact alone demonstrates there is a huge need for a better construction entrance. 
Not to mention, VODs are just much more effective than rock at reducing track out. As an example, here in Colorado, the DOT spec is what you see here in this little image. Um, for most of the time, this is what they specify for a construction entrance. Um, they call out 70 feet long of stone, 12 feet wide, six inches thick minimum, and you know that six ounce, eight ounce geotextile fabric underneath. Um, this is what Colorado does. Most states don't vary too much from that. Sometimes they're 50 feet long, sometimes 100 feet, but generally similar specifications. Um, as Kevin said, he, we've worked with CDOT and CDOT um, added our product to their approved products list a few years ago. Um, and they ended up changing the FOD spec after seeing them out in the field performing as well as they do. So the CDOT specification for FODs is half the length. So 35 feet rather than 70. Um, this is a good testament to just how much more efficient and effective FODs are um, than stone at reducing track out. This has happened in several other states as well where we're approved. Um, I know South Dakota and Wisconsin, just to name a couple. Um, and I do like to mention this to everyone, contractors, but especially my engineers. If you're choosing to specify FODs on a project, you don't need the same length as you would stone just because they are that much more efficient and effective. Um, Generally, you can take that distance and cut it in half as long as you're still getting uh, enough tire rotations, which is about three, three and a half. Um, so that's just a general rule of thumb. And we are always happy to consult on particular layouts and designs for your project. Um, so that's just a brief overview of some history and what the product is. And now I'm going to take a couple of minutes to just talk about some advantages that we do think it um, offers as well as you know, those challenges that it overcomes with a traditional construction entrance system. So these couple of videos right here show that traditional stone entrance being installed. For those of you who are out in the field, I'm sure you're like, I don't need to see this. I see this every single day. Um, I love the pointing guy, always makes me laugh, very important job. But- um, That'd be me, that, that'd be the value I would add right there. <laughs> yeah, same here, <laughs> not moving, just pointing. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, you can see it's a, pretty involved process. There's a lot of heavy equipment. Um, you know, you're looking at a CDL driver. And then the caveat is that this process has to be repeated over and over again to make sure that the entrance is still effective. Um, so, um, sorry, I'm having a little bit of... There's a little lag. So the videos ran great on my side, but that yeah. lag will mess you up on clicking. So you feel free to back up if you want. And gotcha. you can, you're running the slides. It's just a bit of a lag since I'm hosting the PowerPoint. Okay. Good Perfect. job. Thank you. So yeah, this leads me to my first uh, challenge that we believe FODS does overcome. You know, rock is at its peak effectiveness when it's first installed. As soon as one vehicle drives over the entrance, it does begin to flatten. And as you all probably know from your, your construction sites, it can quickly evolve into like a cobblestone road with a few pieces of gravel floating on top. Um, and then the other issue as well is even if it is, you know, first installed and doing its job, any mud or sediment that's cleaned off the tire is just laying there on top of the stone. So subsequent vehicles that are exiting the site are just driving through that same sed sediment. Um, whereas in contrast with FODs, any kind of dirt that's cleaned off the tires falls to the base of the mat. Uh, the subsequent vehicles leaving the site, their tires stay on the top like quarter to half inch of the pyramids. So as long as the mats are kept clean, they'll never come into contact with that same sediment. And like I said, we'll, we'll go over cleaning and maintenance um, a little bit farther on in the presentation. But as long as they are clean, they're literally good as new. They're never gonna decrease in effectiveness, become compressed, um, or you know, stop doing their job, which is to clean off tires. The next issue that we find, you know, we hear a lot in the field is just the huge environmental cost of the traditional stone entrances. Um, obviously, as I kind of mentioned before, the only way to refresh a typical entrance is to just keep bringing in truckloads upon truckloads of gravel. Then at the end of the project, that's all considered contaminated. So all that rock and um, fabric and everything has to be removed and disposed of in a landfill. Um, that's a huge amount of environmental impact, not to mention quite labor intensive and expensive to repeat over and over again. Um, additionally, you know, stone entrances don't always do a good job of maintaining compliance either. So the result, unfortunately, can be track out in the roadways, sediment in the storm drains. Um, not only is this harmful to the environment, but it can definitely result in some expensive violations and fines as well. Um, there is an engineering firm in Wisconsin called R.A. Smith, and they had some software 
that looked at, I believe it was a million different SWIP violations. And they found that 75% of the violations stem from the construction entrance. So it's clear that, you know, it's not really doing its job to prevent that um, the sediment from entering into the storm drains. But just going back to that impact um, issue, I'm going to show you guys this slide, which is a little bit busy, but I do think it does a really good job of just demonstrating the difference between these two systems. So this is a very, very conservative um, hypothetical 12 month project that we got some third party feedback on from some, you know, some project managers and stuff out in the field. Um, and for this hypothetical 12 month project, they told us that on their typical stone entrance um, for that initial install, plus refreshing it every couple of months, you're talking about eight truckloads of gravel. Um, of course, if you put down eight, you're going to have to remove at least that many, probably more because of sediment and stuff that's built up in it. But for the sake of simplicity, we'll say put down eight, remove eight. So that's 16 truckloads of gravel over the life of the project. Whereas with FODs, you can bring in on a flatbed or trailer the four to six mats you need for one entrance. And then at the end of the project, clean them off, put them back on the trailer and um, keep reusing them for 10, 11 more years. So just from that environmental impact alone, there's a lot of savings there. I um, mean, this definitely does translate into cost savings over time as well. And of course we understand why the EPA, you know, uh, mandates a rock entrance and why they want that sediment to, you know, stay on the site and not exit. Um, but having rock as that final piece before leaving a site does pose some challenges from a liability standpoint. Uh, rocks can get dragged down to roadways, lodged in vehicle tires. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are ever involved in either um, engineering side or the construction side of aviation construction projects, but FODs have been a real like slam dunk on those projects as there are major issues with bringing gravel um, onto airports in those sensitive areas. Um, and we're always happy to provide more detailed info about using FODs on any particular industry. Um, but please, please let any of us know if that would be helpful. But really on all projects, the reusability of the mats offers a large cost savings, but from a liability standpoint, those potential savings can be really enormous. And I know Kevin has told me lots of stories he's personally heard about um, that liability piece and how it saved contractors uh, a lot of money over time. Yeah, I'd like to share something with you guys. Um, I'm, I'm back on and I, I've told Chloe several times and naturally we hear things um, weekly uh, in the field as to the liability issues um, from the aggregate because naturally the EPA asks that we use conventionally four to six inch aggregate, but it, it gets wedged in between the dualies of the vehicles, the, the trucks. Um, and we've had numerous contractors, uh, their vehicles getting up to 70 miles an hour on the highways, and then they're launching these projectiles. And we actually had one contractor here in Colorado, um, they actually had to buy a BMW because one of the rocks came off the truck and bounced off the highway and bent the frame rail of a BMW. So we're, we're hearing more and more issues with um, windows, windshields being broken and cars uh, getting damaged. So around the country, it's becoming more and more of an issue. And with our FODs, there is no liability issues. And um, I think that's a big driving point now in the industry. Yep, thanks, Kevin. Um, so yeah, those are just some of the challenges that we do believe FODs overcome um, and just some advantages that they offer. So I know we're, you know, on a time crunch here, but You're I'm doing great on time, actually. You're okay, awesome. good. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to quickly go over just some real life examples of FODs out in the field. And we do have a lot of different case studies available. So you can reach out to us or to Bowman if you've got, like I said, a particular industry you'd like more information on. Um, but this first one here is in Harris County, Texas. Um, Harris County is where Houston is located. It's the largest county in Texas, so we know it's freaking huge. Um, but basically the county after Hurricane Harvey undertook a really massive project to reduce future flood risk there, which included enlarging channels, creative stormwater retention basins. So one of our distributors in Texas worked with a local contractor there called Challenger Services. Um, and they decided to use FODs as like a uh, new and innovative BMP for reducing track out. And as part of the BMP test, Harris County Flood District 
actually recorded the performance and benefits of FODs compared to another stone entrance they had on the same site as well. So it was very cool for us um, because we were able to get like 20 pages of just completely unbiased third party data through this daily monitoring. Um, so super cool for us, but they had a lot of findings. Obviously I said it was, you know, 20 pages. So um, if anyone would like that report, we're always happy to provide it. But some of their, some of their findings were that um, FODs reduced the roadway cleaning by 59%. So, you know, they were just doing a much better job at cleaning off those tires. Um, they also only needed to be repaired once. And a repair consisted of just hammering down a stake, whereas the rock entrance required nine truckloads of gravel um, to refresh the entrance in just 56 days. And actually what happened was after those 56 days, the contractor decided to just totally scrap the stone entrance and just use FODs for the rest of the project. So over 122 days, I think it was 20,400 approximately, trucks drove over um, the mats, fully loaded trucks. They held up really well. And at the end of the project, they were just cleaned off and brought to another site for years of continued use. Um, and Harris County actually did add FODs, like their preferred BMP um, for reducing track out. And I do like this case study because it just does a good job of demonstrating how well the system holds up on those really heavy civil projects. And then when it comes down to it, it's just much more effective than stone. The second project here is um, in Illinois at O'Hare International Airport. I'm sure we've all experienced layovers there at some point in our lives. I know I've had a couple, but basically the airport is currently undergoing a eight and a half billion dollar project to just modernize the entire airport. Um, one of the contractors working on the project was called FH Passion. And actually they had some very expensive issues with rock causing for an object debris damage on some aircraft brakes to kind of go into what Kevin was talking about earlier, that liability piece. Um, so <laughs> they had to pay like millions of dollars to replace these brakes. Um, so they're like, all right, y'all, let's try not to do that again. <laughs> so they decided to bring some FODs on site um, and the project also included a massive amount of construction entrances being really quickly created. So FODs were able to meet that challenge as well. Um, so that is something I do wanna to mention to you all as well. If you ever have a project where you need to change that exit point or access point throughout the life of the project, um, FODs are a great fit for that because you can quickly pick them up and move them to another site um, in just a matter of minutes. I love that. I hadn't heard that yet. And I'm, I'm glad you included that because that ends up being a really big deal that doesn't show up when somebody's quoting a project. It doesn't happen until the day it happens. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And honestly, we even see too, sometimes maybe the plans won't call for it or the contractor weren't, wasn't exactly planning on doing that. But after having FODs and seeing how easy they are to move, they do end up moving them a bunch. It's brilliant. Um, and it really makes their lives a lot easier because they're able to just move that access point to where they need it. Um, anyway, so FODs on this particular project, you know, they were able to meet that challenge of site cleanliness and also the quick moving aspect of the project. So they saved the contractor a lot, a lot of time and money. Um, and the city ended up actually buying the mats to keep there at the airport for future um, projects and just to cut down on future like FOD um, damage. So that's just some quick, you know, real life in the field stories. Um, now we're just gonna give a, a brief high level overview of the maintenance, I mean, installation and maintenance. Um, and since Kevin is one of our technical gurus, he's gonna um, quickly go over with you guys the installation process. It is really simple overall. And we do have detailed installation guides and a video tutorial on our website as well that um, us or Bowman would be happy to provide to for additional info. Um, there's one thing I wanted to interject here uh, with FODs and the airports. My background in aviation um, with aircraft, aircraft engines, FOD is the number one crippler for aircraft engines causing millions and millions of dollars of damage. And when I started the company, I'm like, well, what am I going to name the panels? What am I going to name our company? And it's like, you know what? FOD is an acronym coming from the aviation industry for foreign obstacle debris and the panels remove the FOD out of the tires. So subsequently, that's why I named the panels in the company FODs. So here we're doing an install 
And typically two guys, the panels weigh 430 pounds a piece, but they're uh, stacked in two people, two guys can, can move the panels. They're made out of a high molecular polyethylene. They're very slick. They're kind of like a, a Teflon pan. So they slide incredibly well. So two, two people can pull off the panels and they put in an H bracket in the, the center um, to keep the center of the um, panels from raising up under heavy loads. And then once the H bracket is put in place, then we anchor the, the side straps. Um, we have two straps and then the bolts and they put them together. And then we subsequently at the end, we put in um, our anchors, our concrete uh, form stakes. And so basically all you need is either a ratchet, uh, a maul or a sledgehammer, and the system will actually go together incredibly quickly. Two guys can put in a, a, a six panel system, six to eight panel system in about 30 minutes. And once the panels are down, you anchor them down. They're there for the interim of the, the project. They can be installed on concrete um, as well as asphalt. And each of the installations um, can be taken apart, stacked and removed, put it on another uh, site within 30 to 40 minutes. And that's the greatest thing about the product is how long that they'll be in service. And most people ask us, well, how do you clean these darn things? Most contractors will use uh, a skidster with a brush assembly and typically within just minutes, they can have the panels cleaned. And we have some um, contractors that will actually use um, a street sweeper. And some of them will come over the mats, uh, spray them down with water and then vacuum them up. And within, heck, less than five minutes, the, the mats are clean. And uh, you see a photograph of our, our shovel. It's a custom shovel that fits in between the pyramids and um, it helps a lot. And the mats, typically, um, you can clean them in, like I said, just a matter of minutes. In um, the northern uh, part of the U.S., sometimes the mats will get filled up with snow and ice. And I've had contractors call me up and they're like, Kevin, our mats are filled with ice. What do we do? I said, well, get one of your vehicles and drive over them because the panels have so much flex, it's kind of like a, an ice tray in the freezer. The ice pops right out of the, the pyramids and then they, they just clean them off with a, a street sweeper and the, the panels are good to go. And I'll tell them to throw out a little bit of ice melt and um, the panels are, are good. They're brand new again. Perfect, thanks, Kevin. And yeah, that is something that I do really like about this system is um, anything from installation to maintenance, you know, any contractor can do it regardless of how much equipment they have on site, how much labor they have on site, they can kind of customize that process to um, fit them. So um, that's just a brief overview of the installation and maintenance process. I will give a quick breakdown on costs and of course your local um, Bowman, ASP, Quick Supply, Cascade, they can all give you guys exact quotes. This is just MSRP. Um, pricing here, but um, they'd be the ones to go to for those precise quotes. But the mats are approximately $2,600 each, um, and contractors will generally find that break-even point um, around a year, a year and a half, and that's pretty conservative. Um, they'll also find that break-even point as well the first time that they move the mats on a project. So regardless, even if it's, you know, um, a stationary project with only one entrance, by a year and a half, they'll definitely have met that break-even point, and then they'll still have, or you all will still have um, anywhere from 10, 11 plus years of life left in the mats. So I do tell people, I'm like, think about it as if uh, you're buying a piece of equipment. It's going to cost you some money up front, but it's going to end up making you money in the long term. And this isn't even taking into consideration um, the great cost savings that can be found through eliminating the need for remediation after this, you know, that stone entrance is removed or also cutting back on those expensive EPA or SWIP violation fines. 
Um, so that's just a very basic breakdown of cost. Um, and as I mentioned in the beginning, it's a modular system. So you really can find any layout to best meet your specific site requirements. Um, we do have a lot of different CAD drawings available on our website. Here are just a couple snippets I took of um, some of our more common ones. The first one is the T shape, um, one by five T. So it gives you 35 feet of travel. And then that T shape allows for vehicles to have a wide turnout when they're exiting the site. Because usually you don't need two lanes of travel um, usually not worried about tracking in, just tracking out. So the T-shape can be a pretty um, cost-effective way um, to really have a great entrance. And then of course, on some you know smaller private jobs, this one by four is very common. And then sometimes contractors do prefer those two lanes of travel. So here's an example of that. But like I said, we have a ton of different CAD drawings on our website and I serve, um, any of the locations there are happy to recommend to you all as well um, on which we recommend. Uh, suggest for your site. So that really brings me to the end here. Please do check out our website. We've got a lot of resources available there. And like those drawings, we have local state guidelines, the installation guide and video. Um, we are always happy to set up a lunch and learn with your specific company as well. Um, and then us and all of the locations as well. Um, I know all the time Bowman does this, but we're happy to come on site and help with that initial install if it's your first time using the system. We're really confident that once you get it out there, you'll be super pleased with the results and we just wanna make it as easy as possible for you all to um, do that. And I'm also happy to assist as well with getting the product approved on specific projects with local municipal or regulatory bodies too. Um, but I would like to point out that FODs have never been removed from a project by any kind of regulatory body. Usually the inspector or powers that be are just really excited to see some effort being put into the construction entrance and something that actually works to reduce that track out. That's awesome, Chloe. So if that's your last slide, I'm gonna take over control if that's cool with you. Perfect. And this Thank is a you good all so much. Yeah, you did an awesome job and stick around because we're gonna have some questions. And before I introduce our next speaker, this is a perfect time to remind people that we don't use the chat feature during our webinars because that becomes a distraction for the presenters. But some of our veteran attendees have already used the Q&A that I forgot to mention at the beginning. Q&A is available and we're building in some time to answer some of those questions at the end. And Chloe already answered my buddy Jason Garter's question from Burns McDonald in Kansas City. What's the cost of FODs and the minimum number of panels to meet 35 foot length? And Jason, you probably heard Chloe say that they're seven feet in the direction of, of travel, so five panels. And our next presenter is going to talk about a specific example using five panels. And we can talk to you directly right from ASP KC to you. And um, if it wasn't COVID, I'd just come see you right now, buddy, um, and talk to you about what's available options for buying or renting. And he asked if they're available to rent. Some of our branches they are and some aren't. But um, I'll talk to you specifically about that offline. And there's a couple more questions I think might be answered by our next presenter. So I'm going to go ahead and click the next slide. If I can get that to work, I took over control. There it is. And this is your last slide, Chloe. So I left this up because I think it's pretty cool that you end most of your presentations with this. And I think it's a, just a good reminder that FODs is available. These, these are FODs. These people to me are FODs. FODs are the product. But these folks, Kevin and Chloe and their team are FODs for me because they would work with us to gladly talk about your projects. If we have time, we'll go over some today but more than likely you're just gonna to need to send us, um, when you send back the survey monkey results, let us know you have a project and you're ready for us to talk to you or just reach out to us directly and we'll set that up. So my next speaker, I did not have a printed um, bio for him, but I've talked to him enough years, we're friends and coworkers, is Ron Whiteman. Ron's been with Bowman Construction Supply in Colorado since 2005, but he's been in the industry longer than that. And Ron is a longtime, very active member of the International Erosion Control Association, the Mountain States chapter. Ron's been on a number of IECA committees. He's also worked with the Colorado State University High Altitude and Revegetation Program. And he is a technical sales rep for not just our erosion and sediment control prod products, but a whole lot of our engineered solutions as well. And Ron's fun for me to talk to because he's been in the business uh, long enough to have the approach that I'm used to, uh, which is the relationship driven approach. And that's even in Chloe's title, but he has more experience with FODs hands-on than anybody in our company. 
and I, I didn't, I don't want to put Kevin on the spot, but it could be anybody in the entire country or anybody in the world, we could say. But with that, Ron, have you unmuted yourself so you can participate? Yes, I have. You're driving the bus now, Ron. Hang on, everybody. Thanks, Kevin. Oh, I appreciate it. You're not driving the bus. I didn't give you the keys. I just sat down and watched. And now I'm going to give you the controls. And if you click on the screen, you are in charge. Hang on. Okay. Hey, the reason that I was asked to, to, to speak just for a little bit, not a long time, was in part because I've worked with Kevin since 2016 of all of the branches for ASP and Cascade and Quick. Um, we've been working with them the longest. Of course, Kevin's from the Denver area. Uh, we were one of the first distributors. And uh, um, I just want to go over a couple things as someone who is not a manufacturer in the field working with the customers and some of the responses I've had. Uh, I chose this particular tile or slide for the first one just to show you how much a tire can deform while you're while, while, the, while they're driving over the panels. These things are so strong. The amazing thing is the heavier the truck, the better they work. So if you've got a concrete, concrete truck, excuse me, that's loaded, uh, the more pressure it puts down on the tire, the more the tire deforms like what you're looking at. And just imagine that tire tread twisting and opening up and letting, allowing the dirt to, to drop down into the panels. That's a, this is probably one of the best pictures I've ever seen showing what VODS is truly in its essence. Hey, Ron, I just realized I button hooked you. Yesterday, I told you I'd keep controls and advance the slides. Would you like me to do that? No, I'm fine. All right, thanks. You got it. Uh, I got to reconnect though. Hang on. There we go. Perfect. There's a little bit of a lag, but it's working great. Good job. The um, I just wanted to, speaking from a field perspective, go over real quickly the easiest way to put these things in. Because like everything else in the world, there's an easy way to do it, and there's a not so easy way to do it. When you get these panels delivered to you, they're going, every other one's going to be upside down, just like what you're looking at here. So we normally have the piece of equipment move two panels at a, at a time into place. And then what they do is a couple of guys will flip the top panel over, which creates two panels to connect to, um, and then hook that into the ones that are already down behind these fellas. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the hardware. Uh, those two uh, things over to the left are what we call uh, panel pullers. And they're, they're supplied by FODs. You get those at no charge. Um, as you can see on this, all the dimples are hollow underneath. So two guys can, can uh, pick these things up and slide them across the ground. Like, like Kevin said, they are slick. I mean, they are just like nylon. Um, of, the, of the hardware that you're gonna get to put them into the ground, there's three pieces of hardware. The one that's in the middle there that looks kind of like an I-beam of sort, is it's called an H bracket. And you get one of those per panel. The two straps to the right, the long straps, are, uh, you get two of those. And then uh, the stakes that you put them in the ground, you get three of. So you're gonna get one of the first item, the H bracket, two of the straps, and three of the anchors. And that's the same way they go in the ground. The one that you have one of goes in first. The one that you have two of goes in second. The one you have three of goes in third. And you've seen some of these, so I won't waste a lot of time, but this is uh, Rice putting in an H bracket. Um, they go in the middle, just to keep them, like Kevin said, from flip-flopping around. This is what the long straps look like to go at the end of each panel. What these do is they, they help the panels work together as one big monolithic panel as opposed to independent panels so that they work together. And then after that, it comes time to staking them in the ground. Um, all you need, and Kevin touched on this, is a three quarter inch socket and something to drive it with and a sledge. I myself would recommend a sledge with a longer handle than that gentleman struggling with. Well, I have had people ask me too, why do you have three 
stakes instead of four. And the reason for that is when you put two panels together, you end up with six stakes. So I wanna talk a little bit like uh, Chloe talked about as to the economics of these things. And as she said, it, they, they really are like a piece of equipment. They're no different than a skid steer or a loader. Um, many companies have their yard by them and then their estimators put in the, the regular cost for a, a track out in their estimates. And when they get the job, the yard leases them to the site for the duration of that job. Now, your costs are gonna probably be different where you are, but here in Denver, to have someone come and put in a track bed is right at about 3,000 bucks. That may be higher than where you're at, but you know, Colorado's more expensive than just about anywhere else in the middle of the country. And believe it or not, even though there were the Rocky Mountains, rock has gotten really expensive and it's kind of, you'd think we'd have plenty of it, but that's just not the case. So in this particular model, we're gonna assume that, that as it says there, a 20 foot by 50 foot rock entrance alternative, which is, would be five panels as, as Chloe talked about, you're gonna have about 3000 bucks in the cost of the panels, uh, over, I'm sorry, on, on, a, on a rock install. Um, and then over the course of five months, you'd be looking at about 500 bucks a month is what most of the people in Denver have told me that they spend on fluffing with rock and, and doing whatever they need to do. And then to take the panels out, or not the panels, I'm sorry, I'm getting confused, excuse me. Then to take the rock out and, and dispose of it in the landfill is about 1200. So that's a total cost of about $6,700 for a rock track pad. The reason I wanted to show you this was that you will have a much better idea of what it costs you to put in a track pad and feel free to keep this and use this equation with your numbers and then you can figure out what your cost actually is for a track pad. So in this particular model, um, putting FODs versus rock, five panels are gonna be about uh, 12,500. Our price here is a little less than what Chloe talked about, but. $12,500 for five panels and include the hardware. Um, you're installing them with your folks, so there's no, no charges there. There's no monthly uh, fluffing. Um, and so if you take the $12,500, divide it by 6,700, which is the number we ended up with that last tile. Uh, what it's telling you is that after you've done two jobs that are similar in duration and similar in size, that the FODs are then paid for. And this is the hurdle that really is the reason why we're selling these panels is that when you go on that third site, you're suddenly making $6,700 per job instead of buying that rock and paying for those trucks to deliver it and then taking the time with the equipment to, to clean it up and, to, and, and paying the charges in the landfill to dump it. So it's at that point, once you get past break even, where suddenly they truly are like a skid steer or a loader I mean, it's, it's just a piece of equipment that's making you money. So other than that, that's pretty much it. Um, Kevin? Nope, this is Bill, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take back over. I didn't want to click through like that. Let's go. I'll take over the controls. There you go, Ron. Thanks. Um, so Bill's back on here. We'll leave Ron on, and Kevin and Chloe are still with us. So I'm going to do the quick closing and open it to Q&A. And the only reason I'm doing a quick closing is if anybody has to jump off early, we're – only at 49 minutes of the hour here. But the reminder is, please look for that survey monkey from us. And again, it's not, uh, it's not a marketing thing that we're gonna attack you or call you and see if you're registered to vote, if you have a car warranty. We're just gonna, we're gonna try to answer your questions and keep you posted on when we have other webinars and maybe send you our newsletter if you want it. I have a Q and A question here that I can see that Brandon Keith asked if a PDF of the presentation will be available afterward. Brandon, I'm happy to report that we can do that for you. Please mention it in the survey monkey that I talked about when you get that email and send that back. And we will keep a recording of this and make it available on our website. And we'll give you that link and share that information as well. So if you have any coworkers or any other people you want to see this presentation, uh, go ahead and point them in that direction and share the link. But if you want the PDF and you want to give the presentation yourself, by all means, we won't stop you. 
Um, Jason, to go back to the question that you asked about whether or not they're available to rent, when we first got involved with FODs, we'd talked about doing that at all of our branches. But what we found was there was more interest in buying the FODs than renting them. So right now we don't have a rental program in KC, but that's not something we would say no to with you, my friend. We get a lot of projects from you and like working with you. So why don't you and I personally follow up with that? But for right now, we're set up to sell the FODs and the hardware that comes with it and all the great advice and our charm that you're used to. Um, but we don't have a rental program set up there. And then another Q&A from Patrick Bennett, any special provisions or limitations if your construction entrance is not on a flat surface? Is there a need for anchoring or special installation procedures? I think Patrick would agree that that was mostly answered, but let's go ahead and open it up to Kevin, Chloe, or Ron. And Ryan Anderson, I'm going to see if you're on here and open it up to where you can talk as well. So Ron or Kevin or Chloe, do you want to chime in on that? Yeah, um, this is Kevin. I'll, I'll chime in on that. <clears throat> Um, we've seen for the last couple of years in, in, in the field, no, you don't have to grade out the surface. If the, the surface area is, is close to being level, that's fine. If it's not level, that's, that's fine as well. The mats are so rigid that they can um, span over some uh, voids. And um, the biggest thing is that the panels cannot go over, for example, like a rock, a big rock that's in the, the traffic area because technically what will happen, that rock will, will break the panel. But other than that, you can just lay them down. You don't have to disturb uh, the soil or surface. And um, we've seen uh, in the field, uh, companies that are putting in fiber optics, for example, they just throw out the panels. They they do their work and pick up the panels, move them to another site, and they don't disturb any of the soils, so they don't have to reseed or anything like that. That's impressive. I hadn't heard of that. I like that. So I'm going to go ahead and check another Q&A here. Forgive me as I'm clicking through several screens. Uh, any damage, Donald asks, any damage to tires, especially on pickup trucks or cars? And I can quickly answer that and then let you guys chime in. In our KC branch, I know when they got some FODs mats, they laid them right inside the gate and had our coworkers drive up on them with personal cars and pickups on a daily basis, parked on them on purpose, got out and walked on them, which I don't recommend. But then they also freed them up to where delivery trucks and contractors could drive on them with anything that they could bring in there. And there's no damage at all. They're designed for car tires all the way up to big tires. You want to add anything to that? I don't think so. That was a great description. But yeah, there, you shouldn't worry about that at all. Like I said, I've driven over them on my Subaru cross truck before, no problem. Um, I, it actually is a nice alternative to something like steel plates or um, other track out control, things like that, which have been known to really damage those pedestrian tire vehicle, uh, pedestrian vehicle tires. So well, you sure. don't have to be concerned about that at all. Um, good for well, all types of vehicles. A buddy of mine, a really good personal friend of mine here in Iowa actually owns a construction company that does a lot of work in Arizona. And he bought some FODs on my recommendation and his only concern was walking on the FODs. And I said, do you make a habit of walking through your construction site entrances when you use any other device? He said, no, I never have. <laughs> he said, I just wanted to see what it'd be like to walk on FODs. And he learned, I've walked on them. But what do you folks say to that when people say they don't like walking on them? Um, typically... What we, we see in the field, um, at the entrance points when you have gates, it's like, well, if you're going to uh, set up your, your FODs track out, we recommend that you slide the panels over just so you have a little walkway um, around the FODs. And we've actually had some uh, customers, for example, at a school, if they had, um, during the construction, they had... Uh, like um, a field day or whatnot, we had them uh, just screw um, plywood into the pyramids to make a walkway. Uh, and then naturally when they were done with their activities at the school, then they would pick up the um, plywood and then they're ready for construction use again. That makes sense. Uh, somebody doubled down on the slope question and they said, are you concerned about slopes of five to 8%? Um, no, and uh, Ron, I believe, was on a project that we actually had a, um, to put together a test for a company uh, in um, Japan. It was actually a, um, an oil industry. It was in the oil industry, 
and they actually wanted to use our our panels to get up to the drilling sites and it was incredibly steep so we actually put together a test in Brighton on a, a project and we had a really steep slope and what's amazing about the the panels as the tire goes over the the pyramid it goes over the edge of the pyramid and it, it actually um, kind of sags over the pyramid for traction so not only did we have this test on a very steep slope we actually sprayed water and um, the tires of the vehicles were muddy so once they got onto the panels <laughs> it, it cleaned the mud off and naturally it it worked for the steep slopes however it was like well you know what the panels are not um, manufactured for going up steep grades you know for a drilling site but um it worked. They did well. It was incredible. They did really, really well. So that's not an issue. Yeah, was I think it was like a two to one slope or something like that. Yeah, it was. That it they've was, been tested on. It was amazing. No problems. Well, that's awesome. And we've gotten through all the Q and A questions. And I'll tell you what, this has been so fun for me. Um, Kevin, Chloe, and Ron, you all did a wonderful job of presenting. And I'm excited that we record these and we keep them available. I don't know how many people actually go back and watch or listen to them. It just makes me feel good that we have them. But what's even better, folks, is rather than sit through the whole thing again, the whole hour again, just get a hold of us. And we'd be glad to just do this as a Zoom meeting versus webinar. One thing you'll notice with the webinars, all of the folks in the audience are muted. We can't hear them and we can't see them. When we do a Zoom meeting. If it's a small enough group, we'll just leave the cameras on if you want, if you don't want. By all means, just turn the camera off, but this would be open mic time where you could have Kevin or Chloe or Ron or Bill or anybody else at any of our local branches. And Chloe, I got to tell you something funny. I was chuckling when I was muted. You're the first uh, manufacturer's rep that's presented by saying all four company names. All the others say, look, I'm located in <laughs> Colorado or Iowa or Missouri or Oregon. I'm only going to say the one company name that's local and it's up to everybody else to know I mean all four of them. So Hats off to you. That's better than our employees do. Uh, there's only two employees in our company that work for absolutely all of us. Actually, three now. We added a marketing uh, per expert, but the vice president of the company and myself and this marketing person is the only one are the only ones that really cover the whole company. So good job out of you. I'm proud of you. Uh, it's 128. We're going to wrap it up here in a minute, but just a reminder that uh, it's no obligation for you to set up a Zoom meeting with us. In fact, it's no obligation for you to talk to us about a design for your site and get a quote from what, one of our local branches. Um, the only obligation you have is satisfying your requirements. And one of the things that Chloe mentioned, two things. One thing I really liked was in our northern, you know, Kevin talked about our northern states. Uh, sorry, I jumped from Chloe to Kevin and, and talked about the ice popping right out. And I think of it like an ice cube tray. You know, if you, you break that ice up, it's easy to sweep it out. I have some people who are interested in using the uh, sweeper on them and they, that's exactly the question they asked so you answered that but in talking with Chloe and she's talking about removing the stone entrances and properly disposing of those uh, one of the things she said was uh, one of those contractors found out that 75 percent of environmental violations were due to rock entrances and the irony to me is then there's folks are having to pick up a rock entrance that's a total muddy mess and haul it away to properly dispose of it so now they're putting muddy trucks on all of the public streets, all the way to the landfill. And it just is counterintuitive. So it, the idea of you picking these mats up after you clean them and reuse them at another entrance quickly and over and over again, just makes sense. So Kevin, I'm proud of you that you thought of the FODs. Uh, Ron, thanks for your expertise. And folks, thanks for joining us. Kevin, Chloe, and Ron, you wanna say thanks or goodbye to anybody, you can do it. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. We really, really appreciate you all taking time out of your day. Um, hope to stay in touch in the future. And like I said um, earlier, I do lots of webinars um, with engineering firms and different people. So if anyone's interested, we can do it with you all. I have a uh, local rep on the call as well, but love to set that up if, if there's any interest. Um, but thank you all so much. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day and week. Perfect. And I, I just want to say thanks to everybody and, and, if you want to know more about this, call your rep, uh, whichever of the branches you normally deal with. We do come out on the first install at no charge um, and supervise and show you the easiest way to do it and answer questions. So 
get a hold of the person you're used to talking with and, and we can pick up the ball and run from there. Perfect. Thank you all.